Hey everyone, David C. Anderson here coming at you from the Knife Center and it's our favorite time of the week. Why? Because we're taking a look at the coolest new knives that have just hit our shelves. Let's check them out. All right, you folks know what time of year it is and knife companies know what time of year it is too. And as such, they've been uh, hitting us with some, some of their latest stuff, which sometimes trends a little more intentionally towards giftable stuff, which for Thomas and me, that makes our, uh, our jobs a little bit easier because we would like to show you this giftable stuff too. Uh, we're gonna start off with a kitchen knife set from Henkel's. Uh, it is a two piece set from, or combining two pieces from their twin four star line. It's called the must haves. I almost called it the essentials. It means the same thing, but this is the must haves pairing and eight inch chef knife. And it's at a special price right now, lower than normally it would be 99, $99 hundred bucks for this, which gets you free shipping too on uh, knifecenter.com, of course, at that price point. And it truly is the essentials or the must haves. One of these days I'll get the, <laughs> the name right. You must. Yeah. I think it's kind of essential enough. No, 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 no. We're, we're, we're not getting off track this early. You get an eight inch chef's knife from their twin four star series. You've got the uh, over molded handle. As for the blade, it is a stainless steel, just their standard stainless steel, German made package here. Overall, this is not a, uh, an overseas or an Asian market knife, which I know a lot of folks will appreciate. I don't know, there, there's not much more to say. It's a basic eight inch chef's knife and it does the job really capably. It, it is what it's supposed to be, shall we say. It has what it must. Essentially. You also get the roughly four inch paring knife blade. Both of these, the paring knife, very agile, lightweight, not gonna weigh you down, very easy to manipulate the blade. The balance on the chef knife is perfect. Right there, right on the edge of the bolster, which is where you're gonna be pinching that knife. So it's got perfect weight distribution for ease of use. Not gonna fight your uh, muscles as much. It's not gonna tire you, tire you out as much as you use it either. Really cool, good price on this. Uh, if you or someone you know has been looking to kind of start, you know, upgrade from the real basic stuff you may have at this point in time, this is not a bad place to start. I know I'm hard to shop for. People yeah. always ask me, what do I want? What are you doing in my house? <laughs> Even your wife yeah. asks these same questions to you. <laughs> Next up, we have a new multi-tool or not actually a new multi-tool, but a new option for this multi-tool, which is the Gerber Center Drive, Center, Center Drive Rescue, actually. And we'll get back to that. Um, the sheath, belt sheath on this particular version is now Molly compatible, which previous versions were not. So that's pretty nice. Comes with a little, uh, what's, what's the word we want to call that there? Bit strip. Bit strip. I like it. A little strip of bits right here with different bits in them. You don't even have to supply your own. You get bits with the tool uh, and those will fit into the magnetic, I think it's magnetic. Yeah, magnetic bit holder on the center drive. So named because it kind of, because of this offset kink in the arm, centers the drive point between the two handle arms, essentially, even though that's not a good example of it. Uh, it does liner lock open too, which is nice. This is the rescue variant, which means it has that cutting hook on the outside there. Good for cutting through seat belts, clothing, that sort of thing would be uh, the kind of intended purpose, I would say. But also, these things are pretty handy to have around opening those, uh, those clam packs, the, you know, really obnoxious plastic packaging that stuff comes in where you can't seem to get in edgewise on it. These things can work pretty well. Come in at the edge and you can just pull along the side. Pretty nice. As for the rest of the tool, that's the only outside accessible blade actually, but we do have Gerber's sliding plier heads, spring loaded in this fact, and in fact this time, as you can see. Once open, you can get to the rest of the implements, including the combo edged blade, including this kind of combination pry bar slash bottle opener, 
not a can opener. I got it right that time. This time. <laughs> Double milled file on one side, single milled on the other. What else do we have in here? A little awl it looks like, or a little scraper I should say. And then on the other side we have a little holder for another bit. Come on, get out of there, there we go. That way on the tool without even having to uh, involve the sheath or that bit strip, you can at least have two different uh, standard bits with you. So you can swap between the two on the fly if needed. And there you go, price on this, made in USA, 135. All right, next up we've got a couple items from Grimsmo, uh, most notably known for their Norseman folder, which we have here and I will get to in a moment. But, and this is actually the first time I've gone and looked at one of these myself, their Saga Pen. A custom writing implement is always a fantastic item this time of year. Uh, and these are quite pricey, I, I should say about $395 for it, but it is rather fine. It confused me a little bit at first, I will say. It's got this very nice uh, push button mechanism or clicky top mechanism. The engagement on it feels excellent, so, so very good, but then it's not gonna push closed. You actually have to take this, we'll call it a collet, and pull that down to retract it. Really cool once you get the hang of it. It's really satisfying, really mechanical in nature to use. The balance of it is pretty good. It's not too heavy, but it's also, if you like a little bit of weight to your pen, this has a little bit of weight to it. Uh, I'm not sure actually what uh, insert it uses. Actually, we can find out because it comes with a rather impressive little display case or a packaging case right here. Aha, a Schmidt Easy Flow refill. So all your Parker style, uh, what's the word? Refills will work with it. But it's a rich light box with that slides open and it even has a little ejector switch to help push the, uh, the pen up and out of the box. Pretty cool, I gotta say. A little over the top, yes, but that can be a nice thing. Um, so that is the pen. It is quite good feeling. We also have uh, a few of those and a few of the Norseman folders in stock right now if you're interested in a very premium uh, knife right now. About 1400 for these. This is number 6429. 3.7 inch RWL 34 blade. So you've got solid performance right there with their signature Norseman blade shape, which is kind of a snub nosed recurve tanto, shall we say? I will. Thank you, Thomas. Nice crowned edge on the uh, spine right there. Very thin knife overall. It's a large knife, but very easy to carry as a result of that slim nature. This one has the pink starburst handles. Great action, and for those of you who love a drop shut blade, this definitely has it, more so than some out there. Feels very, very good. You've got the single thumb stud as well, if you wanna open it that way. Very, very cool. Next up, we've got a couple pieces from Heretic, including another pen. This is a bolt action pen, my uh, preferred mechanism of choice these days. This is the Thoth Blizzard Worn Winter Edition knife, knife, pen, you know what I mean, 225 for it. And the whole or, or the kind of nice thing or, or signature thing for this pen series is that it is modular. It's designed to kind of be mixed and matched as you wish, the different parts. But taken just as it is, nice light weight to it. You've got that satisfying bolt action which retracts or retracts or extends the uh, refill, which in this case I think is a Lamy refill if I'm not mistaken. Yes, seems, seems to be. Good action. What I really like, and this is why um, I gravitate towards bolt action pens, is it's got the convenience of a clicky top pen. You don't have to worry about the cap, but if it's sticking in your pocket, whether up here, in your side pocket, it's much less likely to get pressed and get ink all over the insides of your pockets they still don't lose the convenience. So very cool. Uh, in addition to this standard version, we do have a few, uh, I think we do have a few other versions in stock. Yes, uh, right now, if you prefer a different finish, but they're all about this size. Actually, the size can change too, depending on what middle barrel you use. Cool thing. Well, tis the season for gifting, tis also the season for MagnaCut blade steel. 
may have heard of it. Uh, it's been uh, something of a phenomenon in the steel, uh, in the knife steel world anyway, because you have edge retention, you have stainlessness, and you have toughness. They're kind of the three biggest characteristics of any knife steel. And usually the more you push one or two of those pillars, the more the third will suffer. Those are the pillars. MagnaCut is the first to have extremely high marks in all of those categories. Game-changing steel. This is another Heretic. This is the Cleric 2 OTF with a four and a quarter inch double-edged MagnaCut blades. You've got over eight inches of long lasting edge on this particular knife. $420 for it. Nice long aluminum frame. What is the uh, inlay here? It's a stainless steel, almost like bubble pattern inlay. Gives a lot of reflection off and it gives you some traction too, but it's not at all like a grippy traction, like a sharp traction, I should say, but it's just more surface area to keep the, uh, the knife from slipping when you don't want it to. Now, interestingly, this is a cover mounted switch on this knife. It's not a spine mounted switch or a side mounted switch but it still features a reversible clip, machined titanium clip in this case. And normally you'd, I would expect that style or something with a clip like this on an OTF to have a side mounted switch, but it still works just fine for a lefty. It's just maybe not as symmetrical for right or left hand use, but it's a heretic. The action is very good. I mean, you can just hear it going right there hot new blade steel, really cool looking knife. There you go. Next up, we have some fixed blades in MagnaCut. And the first I'll mention is the LT Wright Knives Bushcrafter. In MagnaCut blade steel, we've had these in with a Scandi grind previously. Now we have the full flat ground versions of this knife in. A couple of different handle options. We've got a couple of different burlaps, uh, as well as a, uh, a black and gray G10 with orange liners. It also looks exceptional. And if the, uh, they're all bushcraft knives, of course, but if the Scandi was more suited for those kind of like direct bushcraft tasks, the wood carving, that sort of thing, the full flat grind on this knife has a little bit of a kind of broader use scenario. It's not gonna be as bitey and as aggressive of a wood carver as the Scandi, but it's gonna make a better food prep and slicer knife than that other version. Very cool. Price on these about 320, a little bit uh, above that, depending on which version you get. You got a four inch blade with that excellent Magna Cut blade steel, and you've got a handle that has been finished by hand, like all their knives. So there are no hot spots, no seams, nothing sticks up on these knives. They just feel excellent. And you've got one of the classic kind of handle patterns here for them. It, is kind of their quote unquote broomstick style handle, but with one simple finger guard or uh, index finger groove right there to provide a little bit of indexing power and a little bit of protection from sliding forward. Very cool indeed. Uh, the sheath for these knives is from JRE Industries, as you might expect it being an LT right after all. Comes with the dangler loop, which will allow you to carry it lower gets out of the way from uh, hip belts or long coats. Also much easier or more comfortable when sitting down since you can move it around a little more easily. easily. And a ferro rod loop there on the side. 3 16th inch rods will fit in there, no problem. And as you can see, the, uh, the friction fit on that sheath is very good. And of course, that will wear in a little bit over time. Should be mentioned that those knives, of course, have a uh, lifetime warranty. Next up is a new maker to us here at the Knife Center. Uh, and like LT and Spen from JRE Industries, another friend of mine that I'm happy to be able to represent here now. This is the KH Daily Knives Pocket Bushcrafter. Price on these are about $2.95. And as you can see, Magna Cut Blade Steel here. Again, these are of course handmade knives, or maybe not of course, if you're unfamiliar with his work. But Kyle's stuff, um, that's the K in KH Daily, it is always built exceptionally well. They're usually very beautiful, which I would contend this one definitely is. And they also are gonna cut exceptionally well. Three and a quarter inch blade here, drop point with a full flat grind. And despite the name Pocket Bushcrafter, I'd venture to say this is so much more than just a quote unquote bushcraft knife. This is an everyday carry companion. 
good small hunting knife, I would say too. It's just one of those versatile shapes that'll do just about anything. Maybe not a primary tactical knife due to the uh, kind of three finger grip on the handle, but be that as it may, three and a quarter inch magna cut blade with a three finger handle and yet it feels super secure. It feels almost like a bigger knife. I mean, it tucks in to my hand quite, quite nicely. Speaking of hand, let's check out the handles. We have a couple versions right now, uh, some G10s, actually I think a uh, black and black and gray G10, just like the uh, Bushcrafters I just talked about from LT Wright. We've also got some Westinghouse Micarta options, which look very cool. And this right here, which is the Fire Dog Micarta materials, kind of somewhere in between straight up canvas and a burlap in terms of the thickness of its weave almost like a uh, fire hose type of material in a way. And check out the spine there. File work on all of these that's then been filled in with black epoxy, I believe, creating a more seamless environment there at the back. Very, very striking on all of these knives. Here's where things get even more exciting. You know what I, you folks know what I love even more than a good fixed blade? A pocket fixed blade. And that's what you get here. You've got another uh, sheath, this time also made by JRE Industries. And this is essentially a full pocket slip for this knife. It comes with the space for the knife and another side that you can use for whatever you want. Got a good flashlight you use every day, throw it in there. Got a uh, multi-tool, something like a Leatherman, will fit in there quite nicely. And I know Kyle likes to carry this, uh, his version or the one he carries, he'll throw in his back pocket but if you have uh, large enough front pockets, this will work there quite nicely as well. How about them apples, folks? Very, very cool. Fit and finish on these is great. Cool combination of materials. What more do you wanna know? All right, next up, we've got some more handmade customs here. And this, uh, this next maker is actually uh, another friend of mine who through him, I met Kyle Daly and that is Dan Eastland of Dogwood Custom Knives. The two of them do a uh, podcast together. You should check that out. It's called The Knife Perspective. And this right here is Dan's Kephart. Re I, I hesitate, hesitate to quite say recreation. It's more of a, uh, a closely hewn homage to an original five inch Kephart belonging to Ethan Becker, one of the only few surviving still. And this exceptionally closely follows those dimensions. Uh, but it's using modern steel here. This knife comes in about 460 bucks. It's got a five and a quarter inch blade of CPM 154 with that hand rubbed horizontal grain and that kind of spear point finish with a convex grind and a convex swedge at the top that again, will do just about any outdoor task you could imagine throwing at it. Food prep, skinning, whittling, all of that will stand no chance against a blade like this. Uh, the handles here are black walnut. We've got black micarta pins and black liners. Bit of swell here at the front for a little bit of a good pinch anchor point for certain cuts. And just kind of a fledgling finger guard there. Just enough to uh, let your fingers know right where they are on the handle, keep from sliding forward just a little bit, but not so aggressive that it's gonna get in the way if you need to do some kind of choked up stuff as well exceptionally made knives. I'm happy to own one of these uh, myself, not one of the CPM 154 versions, but this exact same pattern. Uh, sheath is likewise a JRE Industries sheath. Uh, simple pouch on this one, no dangler or fire steel loop, but exactly what you need to carry a knife like this with confidence when you head out. All right, I know we got a lot of fixed blades uh, in a row, which means I'm probably talking a little bit longer about them than I do on most folders. Sorry, Thomas. Um, so I'll, I'll try to speed it up here a little bit. We've got two uh, new fixed blades from Bawidaman Blades. I never know if I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, we have the Stark V2. Uh, this one right here comes in about 335. And we have the Hugen, which comes in about 385. Both of these knives, crew wear blade steel. Very cool stuff, very popular choice nowadays. Sorry, the Hugen has crew wear. The Stark S35, apologies for, uh, for misleading you there for uh, just a moment. We trusted you. I try, I, I do take that trust uh, seriously. 
But anyway, obviously less of a, an outdoorsy pairing of knives right here, uh, more everyday carry slash tactical designs. The Stark with its modified, or I won't even say modified, with its Warncliffe blade shape, maybe we'll say modified because it's got the hole in the middle there, is gonna be a, a fine utility blade day to day. The handles are very cool. It's actually a milled carbon fiber. Like it almost looks like rich light to me and it has more of that matte kind of feel to it. You don't really get that carbon fiber vibes until you really look closely and it's got a bit of that swirl from like a marble to carbon fiber finish, but it is very subtle, I'll be honest. But it feels good, the traction going on there gives you extra grip. Not necessarily the, uh, the type of knife you might wanna squeeze all day long if you're pushing real hard, but it's actually, it's not bad either, I gotta say. Very cool. The other thing I like about it is a lot of times these you know, small tactical everyday fixed blades tend to go a bit thicker on the blade stock for more strength and there's nothing wrong with that at all. But personally, I prefer a slightly thinner blade for the you know, more slicey everyday stuff. Check that out. Not too thick on this knife at all. What are we dealing with here? Uh, thickness 0.11, so not quite an eighth of an inch thick. Pretty cool. Uh, sheath, let's check it out, is Kydex and it comes equipped with a nice J-style hook right here. And if I were a betting man, I bet you these holes are gonna be modular to fit stuff like a tech lock. Not a small tech lock, oh no. Actually, so a large tech lock will work on these uh, bottom two holes right there, no problem. So if you're looking to use that or maybe attach something like an ulti clip, you should be good to go with this knife. As for the Hoogan, it is a bit, little bit larger and just a little bit thicker, not too terribly much. Uh, three and three quarter of an inch on the blade length as opposed to three and one quarter of the Stark. Still, uh, we'll call this one a modified Warncliffe or maybe a, a Warn Tonto, because it's got this little thing here going on. What do we call it on the website? I should find that out, huh? Slicer. Slice toe? Slice toe. Do not slice your toes. It's the, that must be uh, what Bawudaman calls this blade shape. And I apologize if uh, that is something I should know, because then that would be embarrassing. But anyway, same style of handle material here with that carbon fiber, matte finished, sculpted out with the kind of mountain tread pattern, but all the peaks have been kind of eroded worn away so that they're not sharp. It still has, it's got this unique mix of sort of aggressive yet compliant. Very interesting. A little bit thicker on the blade stock and with the crew wear steel, of course, you're gonna have more toughness than the S35 as well, as befitting a slightly larger knife overall than the Stark, but sheath, same kind of thing going on. Kydex, J-hook, whole pattern there for some extra or alternate carry options if you wish. Next up we have an ADV flipper. This is the Ronin Hybrid Calguard. Comes in 425. You've got a four inch or just over four inch blade, S35 VN. Modified harpoon drop toe blade shape. I agree. Do you now? No. <laughs> the handles. Titanium frame lock on the back, G10 front scale. A little bit of a, uh, a slight departure from his norm. But also check out the titanium on the back. We've got a small slider switch here, which will actually provide a double, it'll lock the lock open. With that engaged, I cannot disengage the frame lock. So if you want that extra peace of mind, it is certainly here. And it only works in the open position. It's not gonna you know, close the, uh, the knife in the closed position or lock the knife in the closed position. As for the flipping action, it's flipping good, gotta say. Ball bearings in that pivot, plenty of handle length for my slightly larger than average hands. You've got that nice aggressive finger guard to keep your finger from sliding forward. This is kind of a big tactically inspired knife, of course, so that's uh, an approved feature for sure. Next up, we've got a pair of Microtex and a blade shape you don't see as often anymore. Uh, this is the Ultratech. It comes with the Hellhound Tonto blade. 
quite a distinctive take on the Tonto. You've got almost a trailing point going on, dual flat grinds, the holes in the blade, the crenellations on the spine. How about them apples? 470 for this knife, and it is a signature series knife, which means you've got Tony Marfion's signature there on the reversible pocket clip. Along with that, you've got Microtex Action, which is signature no matter whether it has the signature on the clip or not. Basically, it means you've got a nicely textured slider here at the back, very hard to slip off of that switch, and it fires the blade out excellently. We also have a smaller version I want to show you here, the UTX-70 with the Warhound blade. Much smaller knife, 336 for this, also part of the Signature Series. But Thomas, you're going to love this. Ready for it? Hey! Even though we call this a Warren Cliff, that's kind of the reverse of their Tonto blade right there, isn't it? It is. I mean, it's, it, it's kind of hard to avoid the comparison when you have the, uh, the crenellations and the, uh, the milled holes in that little guy as well. UTX-70 is just such a fun little OTF. I mean, look, look at that. It's palm-sized, yet it still has a very capable blade. Nice action. 2.4 inch on that blade length. Come on. I don't want to say any more because it'll spoil it. It's just so, it's so perfect as it is. There we go. Shall we move on? Cool. Let's do that. Let's do that. Next up, we have uh, a couple of Damascus bladed knives. Cool items to uh, to give to anyone uh, nowadays. Um, first is some new versions of the Best Tech Titan. Carbon fiber overlaid G10 handles. We've got blue and red options there. And the Damascus Tonto blade. 139 for these right here. You've got that three inch blade length. And I actually don't have the uh, composition of the Damascus here in front of me, but based on that price and a little bit on the look as well, if I were a betting man, I'd say it's probably a VG10 Damascus. Don't know for sure, but that'd be my guess in this case. But there you go, really cool little knife. It's got that kind of powerful stubby feeling blade to go along with the stout handle overall. It's simple, but feels very good in a standard grip inset liner lock right there and we do have ball bearings in this pivot blade completely gone when it is closed nestles or tucks into that handle very very nicely and then when you're ready to flip it flips quite well indeed milled pocket clip right side tip up only in this case just a fine little edc utility blade right there i like the leading edge of the tonto with just a hint of belly which means you can kind of get in there get under things you know, pivot along the back here, scraping style. There's a lot you can do with a blade like that. Next up on the uh, much higher end of the Best Tech price range, we have a new version of the Nuke. And this guy has all the bling they could throw at it. First and foremost, a Damasteel blade. So you've got powder metal performance out of that as opposed to traditional folded Damascus patterns. And yes, I know for the pedants out there, I know it's Real Damascus being only like the ancient undiscovered or uh, unrecreated stuff and modern pattern welded stuff shouldn't be called Damascus. It's, we call it Damascus anyway, it's fine. Yes, I know. Damasteel, however, is built up on the molecular or the, the powdered scale to get this look in this case. So you get a different level of performance for sure. And then on the handles, we've got titanium and a lot, and I mean a whole lot of Damascus. Pivot collar surround inlay there on the front, mirrored there on the back. Nice milled Timascus pocket clip that follows the same line, and that gives us quite a chunk of Timascus to deal with in that case. And a Timascus backspacer. As you're probably guessing at this point, this is going to be a pretty pricey knife with all of the uh, the Timascus and the Damasteel. And you'd be correct, $745. Blade itself is two and three quarters of an inch long, modified, fat modified Warren Cliff, shall we say. Three finger, three and a half finger grip on the handles for me. If your fingers are small enough, you can get into the choil there for a little extra grip. It's a little small, a little tight for my larger fingers right there, but it is a very nice blade profile for use. If you would rather not spend quite so much money, you can get these for around 250 bucks for 
much scaled back uh, materials, at least cost wise, uh, compared to this version. But the handle has some really cool milling going on it as well, echoes the nice lines of that inlay, flips great with the ball bearings. You can thumb open it. If you're an enterprising individual, you might even be able to thumb or uh, middle finger flick it. I'm kind of having trouble with this particular one. Maybe it's due to my hand size. Maybe you most folks might have some better luck. But I'll be just fine to be content flipping it conventionally myself. And last but not least, we have, hmm, let, me, let me see, before I make this proclamation, interesting. Perhaps the, the plainest or most incognito of the uh, folding knives on the table right here. And yet, it's at the same time, perhaps the most exotic on the table as well. Damn it, steel accepted. You might, you might take me to task for that. But this is the Terrain 365 Otter Flip AT Flipper. It is kind of a modern take on the traditional Barlow slip joint. And it, as such, you've got a flipper tab and ball bearings in the pivot so you can ball bearing flip it open. You've got a milled pocket clip. You've got a lanyard retention point there at the back. But the blade is where it gets really interesting and hence, and, and where we're gonna get into that most exotic part of things. Traditional kind of spear point Barlow shape with a little bit of a swedge, almost a full flat grind. In fact, it is kind of full flat here out the closer towards the tip, but the blade steel is not. This is a dendritic cobalt blade. Teravantium is the material they call it. As such, high hardness, really high edge retention, and you don't see it a whole lot, but you see it a lot from Terrain 365. They've been doing a really bang up job of really pushing this material forward. And that's just really, really cool. And if you're the kind of person who knows what a, a sleeper car is or a cue car, perhaps, it's essentially something that may not look like much from the outside, but for those in the know, including yourself, you know it's got it where it counts. Kind of like that Millennium Falcon quote too. It may not look like much, but it's got it where it counts. This is a cool knife, I think. What do you think, most exotic on the table? I think all my cars are sleepers that just <laughs> don't wake up. Call, call your, your, all your cars are dozers, <laughs> that's what I'd say. <laughs> Well, that's all we have for today. I hope everyone's having a, uh, a good holiday season so far. Let me know what you thought of the knives and if you wanna get your hands on them, check out the links in the description. Those will take you over to knifecenter.com and whether you're buying a knife for yourself or gifting something for a good friend this season, you're gonna earn some free money to spend on your next knives thanks to our Knife Rewards program. That's all we've got for today. I'm David C. Anderson from the Knife Center. That's Thomas behind the camera. Happy holidays.